What's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to start coding on your Raspberry Pi Pico W using Visual Studio Code. Now this is sometimes preferred to using Thiny IDE because in Visual Studio Code, as you know, first of all, it looks nicer. And second of all, you have many extensions and Pi linting tools that can help you write Python code. So enough being said, let's get into it. I'm going to imagine you already have Visual Studio Code installed. I'm using a Mac right now, but if you're using Windows, the process should be the same thing. So I already have it installed. Uh, the installation for your code is beyond the scope of this video, so I'm just gonna assume that's already done and taken care of. Now once you have that, I'm gonna assume you also have your Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W, and now, before you plug your Raspberry Pi Pico W in, what you want to do is you're going to want to hold the boot cell button, which is the only button on the Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W, which is that button right there. And you want to hold it and plug it in at the same time into your computer so you can install MicroPython onto the device. So I'm holding it. And once that happens, if I go to my desktop, you can see I have RP1 slash RP2. So that means I did that correctly. Now we want to go and get the latest version of the MicroPython that we want to run on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So I am just going to go to micropython.org and I'm just gonna to go to download. And I selected Pico W because I'm using the Pico W version. And you can just select the latest build from the nightly builds. I just did this one. It is April 7th as of the time of this video that I'm creating. So I did that and I already downloaded it. As you can see, I have it here. So now I just wanna move that onto the device. So it's really simple. You just want to go to your the object you downloaded, the UF2 file, and I could just drag it onto the device. And we'll give that a moment there, but we should see that the, the device will restart. So let me exit this out. Okay. Okay, now you know once that disappeared that you did everything correctly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it back in. So I'm gonna go unplug and plug. This time you don't have to hold the boot cell button. The boot cell buttons are only if you want to install the driver for MicroPython. So go ahead and unplug and unplug the Pico. Now once you have an unplug and unplug and you have MicroPython installed, now you want to go back to Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to go back here. Let me move my head. And I'm just going to go to Extensions and search Pico in the Extensions and Pico W Go. Previously it was called Pico Go, but now it's called Pico W Go. I think after the Pico W came out. So let's go ahead and install that. So we can see that it's installing and it does have some basic instructions here. They're not that in depth. One of the important things you wanna note in the instructions is it does have some requirements. So MicroPython firmware, so we did that of course. And the other one is Python 3.9 or newer on your system. I have Python 3.11. If you're watching this video, you should be past Python 3.9 by now. If not, please upgrade because there are many benefits of going to Python 3.11. So once you have that, it's basically telling you how to set this up. So we wanna to go to a project folder. So we can just go to any folder on our device. I'm just gonna to go to the Explorer. I created a test folder on my desktop. And what it's saying is hold Command Shift P, so I'm on a Mac, and then click, click uh, Pico W Configure Project. So it's gonna configure the Pico W extension into your project. So if we go back to the Explorer, we can see that in our test file, we have this, these files for the Pico W Go. Now, next thing, if we want to start writing code on the Raspberry Pi Pico W, what we can do is go down here on this Pico W. See, currently it's disconnected. If we just click this, we can see it finds it and connects it very easily, and we could start writing code very simply. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a file called test.py, and we can go ahead and enter that. And I'm just gonna use the code sample from, from their example. So if we go back here, I'll show you that example in a sec. So if we just search Pico, and we go here, they have a, a very simple code sample. I'm just gonna scroll down, let me exit all this. And it's just the blink LED. So if we go here and we copy this guy, and we go back to our files and we save it. And we can just simply run that on our device and we should see the LED start blinking on our Raspberry Pi Pico W. So if I go and say run current file, now off the screen, actually I could just show you that my device is blinking as yours should as well if you installed MicroPython correctly and you have the library installed correctly. Now, you may be wondering if you have used Thani IDE before, usually it does show your files on your Raspberry Pi Pico and your local files on your device. I don't think it does that with this package, which is kind of one of the cons, but uh, one of the pros of using this package is clearly we get to use a nice IDE, which is much nicer than Thani. And if you do want to deal with moving files back and forth from your Raspberry Pi, 
uh, Pico W. They have a lot of commands that make it really, really easy to do that. So if we go here and we go to Pico W, we can see all the commands. So we can actually download all the files from our Raspberry Pi Pico W. We can upload the whole project here to Raspberry Pi Pico W. So it really shouldn't be that different in dealing with files on your Raspberry Pi Pico W. You just don't have the nice selection as you had here on the side with Thonny IDE. But overall, I think this is much more powerful and much nicer to work with when you are writing Python code. So I think it's worth giving a shot and see how you like it. And finally, the last thing you could do, which I think is pretty cool, is you can actually go here and see the Pico pin map, which is really convenient because sometimes I do forget the pins and which ones are which when I'm uh, putting sensors onto my device. So this could be really useful for you as well. So I think overall, this is a pretty powerful extension VS Code, and I think you should try using it. So if you learned something in this video, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions about what I did in this video, let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, guys, stay tuned, and thanks for watching.